great misconception of what a cyborg is in, in popular culture, especially uh, things like the Terminator, which uh, describes the cyborg as a malicious, uh, evil thing. In no way is, is, is meant to be that. But Hollywood cyborg bears little resemblance to reality. And far from being a science of the future, cyborg technology is firmly rooted in the here and now. It focuses less on creating realistic robots Now this was something that wasn't possible to observe until we had the ability to image these cells alive. You can also watch the neutrophil eat bacteria. So here's the neutrophil here. These are red blood cells. So you take a little bit of droplet of blood, put it on a slide, and you add some bacteria to it. And here's the bacterium. Neutrophils are the guys that I call the garbage cans. They run around and eat up all of the bacteria. And you can see, it's going to chase the bacteria. <laughs> it's persistent. <laughs> Finally gets it. <laughs> and, but it's not full, so it's going after the next one. So the neurons in your brain, the cell body, this large structure, will make proteins that perhaps your toe needs. And so it's going to send them along these long processes, along microtubules, out to the periphery. So you can study these cells, which look very different from a heart cell, in the dish and watch the long extensions growing. And then with DIC, you get an even better topographical view. And you can see all the little fine extensions on these neurons and they'll calm down a little bit once they start attaching. There they go. Cells don't like to be isolated. Their, their blood cells don't mind it, but the other cells like to be attached. And you can see now that it's attached, and these, they like to have contact. They're a little bit happier when they touch each other. And then you can see it round up and divide. So you can actually watch cell division. The, it takes about 24 hours for a cell to divide in culture. But we shouldn't forget the student who arrives having had no exposure to the arts. That, we believe, is as important a part of an undergraduate education as exposure to the humanities or to uh, the social sciences or to the sciences or engineering. So I think bringing the arts from the periphery where I think they have been into the center of the university is going to be exciting for students. I think it's going to be tremendously exciting for faculty. And I can say as someone in Nassau Hall, I know it's going to be exciting for me. Uh, 
Uh, as a university, of course, we have always studied the arts. We have studied literature. We've studied art history. We have studied um, uh, film. We've studied works of art as scholars. But what we have not emphasized as much as I think we need to do is the doing of art, the creation of art. And as a scientist, I've always believed in the tremendous synergy that happens when you have an experimentalist and a theorist working together in the same space. They play off each other in, in ways that are really stimulating. Yeah, 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 yeah